the very last 2015 International Home and Houseware Show webinar. Uh, we hope today that we will give you some tips on how best to use what we think is the most appropriate and meaningful tool that you get after the show, uh, and that is a list of uh, several classes of attendees. Uh, and uh, we're going to give you some clues and tips on how to uh, how to use that list. Uh, I'm Terry Reynolds uh, with the International Housewives Association. I'm here with Nancy Michael. Hello, everybody. And we have a guest appearance from Don Whitman, who is here. Good afternoon. Uh, and we, uh, among us, are going to see, we'll see if we can help you find your way to a useful, um, uh, to, to a very meaningful use of the buyer and media list. Uh, we will take your questions uh, during the webinar, uh, and you can uh, you can use your chat function to send those questions in. We have somebody monitoring them, and they will break in uh, as appropriate to uh, uh, to ask those questions, uh, and we're happy to answer them. But again, we'll, and we'll show you our contact information again at the end. But if you have any questions about any of the things we talk about here that you didn't get a chance to ask during the webinar, Nancy and Dawn and I would be happy to answer your questions for you. Uh, we want you to make as full use of the uh, buyer and media list as possible. I'm going to give you a second uh, on this slide to write down that URL in, the, in, in case some of you have yet to download the list or lists. Um, there are multiple lists there. Some of you may have downloaded one, but not the rest. So uh, this is uh, the direct link to the login. For those of you who are a little more adventurous, we can uh, help you find your way to that login through uh, housewares.org. If you go to housewares.org and click on the show item in the orange crossbar, and then click on on the white crossbar at the top, and then click on Exhibitor in the orange crossbar. You will come to the page that is on the bottom right of this slide. If you click on the Marketing Kit icon on that slide, you will come to this slide, which will give you the opportunity to click on the Marketing Kit and then go into the Marketing Kit and click on the Buyer List. Um, that's why we gave you the URL. It is, a, it is a little bit of a difficult road to get here, uh, but uh, those of you who have used all of our marketing tools during the show are very familiar with the marketing kit, and this is where this list lives on a year-round basis. Um, uh, the next, uh, the, the slide that you, the excuse me, the page that you come to on the site uh, after you have clicked. Uh, on on all those clicks or have used the URL uh, will be the page that's in front of you now. And what you need to download this list is your company ID and 2016 seniority number. Um, this is where our friend Don comes into the picture here. Uh, you were sent you were sent these um, uh, uh, originally with uh, instructions on how to download this email in April, but I know that you all get a lot of email if for some reason you don't have it or can't locate those two numbers. Um, uh, they're also on your space uh, uh, application for 2016 as well, but Dawn would be happy to send those out to you and her email is here on the slide. If you'd like, you could also pick up the phone and give me a call. My direct line is area code 847-692. 0140. So now that you're there um, and you've gotten in, you're, what you're going to find when you get there are three lists. You will find a U.S. buyer list, you will find an international buyer list, and you will find a media list. We're going to spend a few minutes talking about the buyer lists in general, but more specifically the U.S. buyer lists. Let's talk about that and what you will what you get when you get this list is literally all or virtually all of the registration data that the buyer provided us when he or she registered for the show. Um, they give us their, of course, their name. They give us their title. They 
give us uh, uh, they give us their address, their phone number, their fax number, and all of those are shared with you. Uh, in addition, they give us three other pieces of information that are helpful to you in determining how to use this list. The three that they give us are retail class of trade, job functions, and products of interest. And we're going to go through a little bit what, what's in each one of those lists. But I would like to share with you that uh, we do review every buyer registration every week. And if a buyer has made an obvious mistake in any of those, uh, with the exception of the products of interest, in either their job function or their retail class of trade, we attempt to edit it so that it makes it easier and more meaningful for you to use this list. But the, what you are looking at is literally, with a few small edits, the raw data that the buyer gives us when he or she registers for the show. In retail class of trade, we have 19 options. Um, and uh, this has grown pretty dramatically over time. Uh, as you can see, some of you might not have expected to find museum stores there. Um, I will share with you that in terms of people in each list, the largest three are independent, um, independent kitchen stores. Uh, they are, uh, the second is internet, and the third is gift stores. So independent specialty, internet, and gift are the three largest. But as you can see, there are a number of important, um, uh, important uh, other groups um, uh, that also will have plenty of uh, information for you in terms of your follow-ups and how you'd like to uh, reach out to these people. I would uh, encourage you uh, to, um, to make a full use of the list because uh, occasionally we miss one of those edits, but uh, either in retail class of trade or in job function. But, um, uh, but it, again, these are these are the options that we give them, and they're very good about telling us uh, where they fit. In terms of job functions, the ones at the top are probably the most meaningful for you: uh, buyer, buying assistant, merchandise manager, corporate executive, owner, planner, logist, planner, logistics manager. Sometimes is and sometimes is not a buying role. Um, I wouldn't leave them out of your communications if you feel that. They are. Uh, they play some meaningful role in many cases. Those are the people that set the product up in the in the retailer system. In many cases, those are the those are the people that actually generate the reorders. Uh, as a consequence, you may have some reason to speak to them. Um, uh, other, uh, we added a number of years ago because we find that occasionally uh, retailers will bring store managers or assistant store managers or other personnel who aren't directly related to the buying of the product, but that in fact may have May, may have a role at the show, and certainly might have an influence uh, that you would want to uh, that you would want to track them down. And we certainly don't want to exclude them from the list, or have them call themselves something else to confuse you. But buyer, assistant buyer, merchandise manager, corporate executive, and owner um, are the probably the ones you'll use the most. Another just little note that I think you'll find interesting is among U.S. retailers, merchandise manager and corporate executive and owner. Uh, which are the senior positions and, and decision makers in that group, amount for somewhere between 35 and 40 percent of the entire uh, retail buyer base that come to the show. So again, you you can use them to um, you can use them to to, to target some of your uh, communication. Those of you who've been in the business for a while understand that sometimes the buyer doesn't like you going to the senior person above their heads. Um, uh, so it might it might be a, uh, behoove you to uh, include the corporate executive on the communication, but make sure the buyer knows that you're doing it. Um, uh, and uh, again, we also collect their title and free text, and you can match sometimes match back their role to their title in case we miss it on our edits. You may find that you have the opportunity to find a corporate executive who has tried to disguise him or herself as a buyer, um, but uh, you'll be able to tell by their title. Um, the the last is product of interest, and um, I think those of you who are Excel savvy are beginning to get the picture here. Uh, you can, um, and these are this is about as broad as we think we can make this list and still get responses from people, because the show has such a broad base. I mean, there are, uh, there are uh, 29 products of interest here that 
we we certainly hope that your product or your the product that you uh, seek to find do follow up with buyers on um, is uh, is listed in here or something very close to it is. Uh, it certainly will give you an idea of uh, of who came to the show in those roles, um, and uh, we would want very much for you to be able to find what you're looking for here. Um, uh, again, I think you use your best judgment in, the, in uh, trying to find uh, use one of these to match your product. Some of them are quite broad. Some of them are fairly focused. Uh, many of them are um, secondary categories, uh, but uh, uh, but of course the primary categories get an awful lot of uh, action. To no surprise to to you, uh, I'm sure kitchen uh, kitchen tools and gadgets is the biggest. Um, Category of response, uh, kitchen tools and accessories. Excuse me, the biggest category of response of any uh, at the show. So if you're sorting against that list, I think you'll find a significant response there because that category kind of covers a lot of retail channels of trade. Next, uh, you've downloaded the list, and now you want to now you want to make a custom list. Uh, and your list should very closely focus on the people that you would like to bring. Uh, you would like to bring to your uh, bring your information to after the show to continue your follow up, to continue your year round uh, conversations with them. Um, uh, you can literally sort a list of owners of independent specialty retailers who came to this show to buy cookware. Um, and that's using your sort function uh, in uh, in Excel. Uh, I think at this point you uh, many of you have probably already done this or uh, would wish to do it. If you need any help, uh, your show sales manager does have access to some tools that might be able to help you with this sortation. Uh, but we uh, but we would encourage you to uh, sort it yourself. Uh, again, you can create some very meaningful lists here um, for your reps, for your sales team, for your internal sales team, your external sales team, and as we'll mention a little bit later, for your international sales team in terms of uh, in terms of buyers. Um, but I also encourage you to do one more thing, and I it, it I know escapes some people, but not everybody tells us everything about themselves when they register for the show, um, and you will know. Uh, some people who may not have told us that they buy in your category, but that buy for a retailer that you uh, have targeted, uh, somebody you're chasing around but don't have their phone number, their fax number, or their address. Uh, this, uh, I would encourage you to scan the list uh, even after you've done your sortations to see if there's anybody else that might have fit in uh, in the sort that you're looking for. Uh, uh, we, uh, uh, as I think you probably know, there aren't many shows who offer this information to you, um, and we offer it. Uh, we offer it for a number of reasons, as you know. We're a not-for-profit trade association, and our goal is to make the show sex successful, make buyers successful, and to make you successful. And uh, we want to make sure that, in addition, this is a selfish motive because you help us promote the show by using this list, particularly before the show. Uh, one thing that is sure to come up uh, when we chat about this list is, for the most part, uh, some media not included, uh, there are no emails on the list. We meet with two groups of retailers um, uh, on a regular basis at the show, both large and small uh, U.S. retailers, and we're convening an international retailer council uh, for the 2016 show for the first time, although we do have some international people on our domestic on our current councils, we're going to have a specific uh, council for them. And we ask this question of them each year. They know that we share the list. They, in some cases, appreciate that we share the list. Um, but we ask them whether uh, it's okay to share their emails, and they have consistently, over many years, told us that the answer is uh, no. Um, uh, one other more um, sort of almost appalling fact that we've come across over the last uh, couple of years is we've convened another group of young professionals in the house years industry, both buyers and sellers. And I understand that from them that email is a tool, a drudgery tool for them, 
and they would prefer to be communicated in different ways, particularly on the buyer side. So I think there's an opportunity for you to make your mark um, in a different way. We have suggested, uh, Nancy and I have uh, suggested all along in our pre-show uh, webinars that ways to reach out to people, and they aren't very much different after the show, but ways to reach out to these buyers is to send them a unique message of some sort. Send them a sample. If they weren't at your booth, sorry we missed you. We've got a unique, we've got a unique product to show you. We, uh, uh, we, we think that um, we think it's it's something that is meaningful for your business. We've been in your stores and we see what you're selling, and we think we can make an impact on your business. Something like that. I would also encourage you, dumb as this sounds, uh, to use the fax machine. I mean that. Those of you who approximate my age will remember when fax machines came around and everybody huddled around the fax machine when it started humming. Now, of course, nobody pays attention anymore except that they don't. So now when it comes in, it's a big deal again. So it is a tool. It's not your most important tool. Your most important tool is a meaningful direct communication. And this list will give you, this list will give you address, phone, and fax. Um, and we hope that that is appropriate and enough for you to um, uh, to make the list meaningful for you. There are two other tools that we have given some of you, but not all of them, uh, that we encourage you to make sure you are using or have used already. Those of you who got one of our lead retrieval tools at the show, um, uh, this year we had two lead retrieval tools, a scanner and, an, uh, and a uh, phone app. Um, uh, those leads were recapped for you and sent to you the week after the show. Um, and some of you may already know that those same leads were sent to buyers. So we sent the buyers who were scanning booths and media uh, a list of all of the companies that scanned them. If you missed out on this tool this year, it's free. So I, I think, and we, I think the number is like 40,000 booth visits that we that we reported this year, uh, that we shared with both exhibitors and attendees. And I uh, make sure that when your marketing kit arrives in the fall, that you uh, jump on that free lead retrieval device called My Lead, um, and we would uh, we would hope that you would uh, be able to be among the 800 who gets that for free next year. It, uh, we find it to be uh, for, for buyers who encourage us to do it uh, because they want to take control of some of their follow-up and don't take very good notes of the show. They tell us that this is meaningful for them and they get it the week after the show. You will have gotten it the week after the show. And we'd encourage you to add that to any of your prospect lists that you create out of um, uh, Houseware's Connect, excuse me, out of the, uh, the buyer list from our, from our show. Uh, one other tool that we gave you is if you were a, if your product was in the new product showcase, any one of the three new product showcases at the show, one of the advantages of the new product showcase was that we gave buyers the opportunity to scan products in the new product showcase and then gave them a list as they left in on paper of all of the products they scanned in booth number order so they could go on the floor and find them. If you had a product in the new product showcase and it was scanned by a buyer, and not all buyers scan products, but if it was if it were scanned by a buyer, uh, you got a list the week after the show of all of the buyers who scanned your products. Now, in either case, either the my leads or the new product showcase, if you can't find those emails, didn't get those emails, let us know, and we'll do our best to reconstruct them for you. Um, uh, they they are there somewhere. It'll take it might take us a little while to go get them, but we can reconstruct them for you, just in case you missed them. But every product in the new product showcase had a scan bar next to it, and if buyers scanned it, we sent you a list of all the buyers who scanned it. In addition, we sent that same list to the buyers of all the product all the products they scanned in the new product showcase, um, so that uh, they could follow up with you as well. So those are the. Um, uh, those are the three base lists that you have to help you follow up for the show and, by the way, to get ready for the 2016 show. Uh, just a brief uh, uh, note on the international buyer list. Um, 
as you know, the international list is uh, fairly complicated. Uh, there are uh, people uh, who come to buy internationally that in the U.S. market we might call reps, but in the international market they actually have buying responsibility uh, uh, because they've been granted that buying responsibility from the retailers they call on. Uh, the, in my, to my mind, the best and most meaningful use of this list after confirming the people that you met at the show whose contact information you might have lost is to create a list by country uh, uh, here so that, uh, because that's the way that most of you organize your sales force um, and your reps and your distributors and so forth. And if you sort the list by country, I think it gives you a pretty good idea of who it is um, that uh, those folks uh, in those markets might, might need to be chasing down or that you might want to chase down from, uh, from here. As you know, the show attracts uh, about 7,000, between 6 and 7,000 non-U.S. Uh, attendees. Um, uh, and many of you have told us that you met with them at the show. We find South America and Central America to be particularly strong um, as, uh, as the International Home and Houseware Show has become the dominant Western Hemisphere uh, houseware marketplace. Uh, but also don't forget there are a large number of UK and European uh, retailers who come to the show, uh, a fair showing from Australia uh, and uh, uh, New Zealand and other parts of the world. Um, I, uh, I think that you might be able to use this for both prospecting and for follow-up with people that you met at the show. Um, again, uh, we edit this every week, uh, but this is the information they gave us. So um, if, there, if there's anything in there that's a phone number didn't work or a fax number didn't work, or um, it's likely that, uh, that in their registration they didn't get it right, if you'll let us know, we'll do our best to see if we can help you find them. Uh, <clears throat> those of you who downloaded the 2014 list before the show, uh, uh, you, uh, you now have two lists to use that can help you. And over the course of time, I think, as we do here, our list goes back to 1999, uh, as we do here, you can create what I think is probably the most meaningful list of, uh, of retail buyers in the home segment available anywhere. Uh, we have, um, uh, again, many buyers don't come every year, so I would encourage you to use both lists. Uh, to share with your sales team and make sure that they're following up on both sides. Um, but this is uh, this this international list will vary year to year, and they they're uh, many of them come every year, but some of them come uh, every two or three years. So I'd encourage you to use both lists. Uh, again, your international sales team should have this in hand and be working with it already. Um, last um, list. Uh, that we'd like to share with you is the media list. And this list is every media person who registered for the show. You have, if you're interested in media, you've had at least you, you've a actually had uh, several iterations of this. This is verified. Uh, Debbie Teschke, our PR person, verifies every name on this list post show, um, uh, along with her uh, uh, her measurement of the impact that media had on the show. If you're not downloading this list, you may want to listen to this fact. We had over 400 million consumer impressions generated by the show. Um, that gives you the opportunity at the show to leverage this, this media list, or before the show, um, to leverage this media list. Uh, tonight in New York, we're having our uh, second media event of the year. We're doing one later on this month in London. We do one in the fall in New York. Uh, we're going to do another one in January pre-show. This is a tremendous value the show offers you that not everybody takes advantage of. Uh, but buyers finding products, I spent the, all day with a buyer um, on Tuesday. Uh, and, uh, and believe me, buyers are influenced by what they read in the media. And they, uh, there are many of them are looking for new products to put in their stores based on what they see in the media. So I would encourage you to download this list. 
There are U.S. and non-U.S., so you will want to sort by country. Many of you split, just as you split your sales, you split your uh, marketing and PR efforts um, uh, globally. Uh, but um, I encourage you to share this with your PR team if you have one, with your PR firm if you have one. Uh, we will not let them download the list, but we certainly would encourage you to share it with them to make it more meaningful. Some of these people do have emails. This is Nancy just put it. <laughs> so this is one list where you actually um, can get some email addresses. I know I would speak for Debbie to say don't. Um, we like to use the term here, pray and spray. Don't don't send a blanket email to all of them because it's not always your product category may not be relevant to everybody. So spend some time, be thoughtful with it. Look, there's both trade and consumer um, contacts on here, so it, it's a very good list in terms of really targeting an audience that you're trying to promote your product through. I don't know if uh, those of you uh, who may not be familiar with our media efforts, um, we do and just had a very um, uh, beautiful expanded new press room of the show uh, in 2015. Um, the show is a media magnet. We do spend an awful lot of time working on getting media to the show. And even if they don't come to the show, uh, we work with them. We have uh, seven or eight PR professionals that we work with who actually work hand in hand with the media in advance of the show. They certainly uh, they certainly know who we are and they use us as a resource. And uh, uh, when we get around to the fall and start talking about uh, uh, start start talking about the, your marketing efforts, uh, make certain that you pay close attention to what Debbie Teshke has to say about attracting the media because it can be a, a uh, another way to make an impression on a buyer uh, and certainly build a market through consumers. Um, one last warning, uh, and this is a warning, this list will expire on or about July 1st and will not be available to you any longer until it comes back in the fall. In November, in, with the launch of the marketing kit. So, uh, thank you, Don. And, uh, uh, it will be the same list that comes back, so you don't need to download it again. Uh, but if you haven't downloaded, if you've just downloaded U.S. buyers or just downloaded international buyers, I encourage you to go back, download the other lists, put them in a place just in case you, you could use them further down the road. You might hire a PR firm and somewhere down the road and between now and November and want to have that list available for them, and we would not be able to be, it's not available to you. This is all because of the show cycle. We're now, July 1st is roughly the deadline for space applications. Um, and then we start building the show for 2016. And when that, when that show begins to take shape in November, that's when the list is available again to you. And again, in November, we'll ask you to help us recruit buyers for the show um, uh, using the list and to bring them to your booth. Again, we'll have, as we did in 2015, I feel confident we will have a record number of U.S. and international buyers at the show in 2016. Um, uh, we, uh, we're, we're not sure where they all come from. We should have spent a lot of time reaching out to them. And, uh, we, um, uh, and we spend a lot of time with them. And we, uh, we, know that, uh, we know what they're looking for, and we hope that we continue to bring them what they're looking for in terms of the show. One of the things that they spend a lot of time talking to us about is Housewares Connect 365. And when I was out with this buyer that I mentioned on Tuesday, I mentioned Housewares Connect. Oh, she said, I use that all the time. It's really great. Um, she works for a major hardware cooperative. And, uh, um, and we're headed down to Bentonville in a couple of weeks to talk to Walmart. And they tell us that they use this list, that they use Housewares Connect 365 very heavily. I would encourage you to go back to Housewares Connect 365 and update your listing. Uh, the link that's on the page is how you get there. It's the same login uh, that you use to get the buyer list to get, on, seniority number. To get on to, to, to get on to Houseworks Connect 365. Go take a look. There may have been products that you didn't put up before the show that you think are appropriate to put up now. Um, the, the most, it's really simple to do. Um, even I can do it. <laughs> and so, and uh, uh, it allows you to put up photos, videos, and I would encourage you to put up videos. They really do well there. Um, uh, 
and uh, company profile. Your, your entire company profile, all your contact information, make sure it's right. You have your sales contacts here, so if buyers want to contact you, they can do it right through there. If you don't want to sell to them, you don't have to, but the worst that could happen is some, if somebody fall, drops into your lap and just make sure they're all right and they're all current because I know that there are a lot of, there's a lot of human resource movement in our industry. So make sure that all your contacts are right. If you have any problem with that, go back to Dawn again. She'd be happy to help you update your listings. Um, Dawn and I were working on one today where it needs some updating, and we're happy to do that. It's an ongoing process. But again, Houseworks Connect 365 is a tool for you that we think you should be using year-round. It will be well over a million searches throughout the year on Houseworks Connect 365. And it's free. And, as Dawn said, it's free. And with the exception of the new product showcases, everything else we talked about here is, is, a, is a free service. Um, again, not-for-profit trade association putting on a trade show, uh, but it's for the benefit of the industry. We are actually managed by member companies, and uh, and we are uh, we're ha and we're happy to be a benefit to you. Nancy has a couple of housekeeping items for you. Um, so a couple of things to note for 2016. So you should all have received your space applications at this point. Um, if you have not, please contact myself or Dawn, and we will get you the information you need. Um, we have a July 3rd deadline this year in order to receive booth assignment in our first round of placement. If you are planning to attend in 2016, I would strongly suggest that you meet this deadline. Um, we find ourselves in a very nice what we like to call a high class problem in that we our sell out rate, we're selling out faster, we're, we will be sold out again this year based on um, trending right now in terms of applications already back in. So I really encourage you to make sure that you get this accomplished in the next week or two and meet that July 3rd deadline. One of the other things that comes along with space applications this year in terms of being new is that we've revised our payment terms. Um, we've gotten a little tougher on this as a not-for-profit. We've got to keep things moving and um, we will require full payment by July 3rd. There is a 50% payment option you can take again this year, but we will very much push those deadlines in terms of collections and we will not assign space until we have full payment. So very, very important. Um, the discount is is relevant again this year. So if you pay in full by July 3rd, you're able to receive that 1450 member rate. That would include that you take membership. Um, if you choose not to take advantage of the full payment and you want to go 50% payment as a member rate, um, you will be eligible for a $15 square foot. From any time you take the membership rate, that, that rate will be in, into play for you, $15 per square foot. Um, if you've got questions on that, myself or Don, we are your experts. Don particularly is the guru on online space applications, so if you're filling out your application and you have questions or concerns, she's your point person. Um, she will hold your hand through it if you find that necessary. Um, we have a lot of changes for 2016. One thing I'd really like to call out is our new branding. Um, we rebrand the show every four years, so when you walk into McCormick Place on March uh, 5th next year, well, before that because you'll be setting up, but you will see a whole new look. We're very excited about it. You, you started to see the house logo and the It's Smart with ART highlighted um, on most of the materials that are coming through now. So lots in store. The show is going to really have a phenomenal new look. We've put a lot of time and effort into getting that um, completed. And we're still working through a few things, but it's going to be really nice. Um, lastly, we've mentioned this a few times. We will conduct webinars um, in conjunction with the marketing kit that will be in your hands early November. We really encourage you to take advantage of that webinar. It's a longer webinar. It usually runs a little an hour, a little after. We cover all the marketing um, opportunities, both free and paid, all the display opportunities, 
all the media coverage, Deborah, Deborah, Debbie Teshke, who Perry mentioned earlier, does a really nice segment on what a consumer impression is, how we get to these numbers, how to work with the media, what things you can take advantage of, press kits, et cetera. So be on the lookout for emails that will come through for those webinars. We will conduct about three or four of those. And just as an FYI, we're always happy to do a one-on-one -on -one consultation with you on any of these things. If you find you can't meet, make it or you're confused afterwards or you just want um, a personal touch, we're, we're always willing and happy to do that. Same with this. We're happy to help you through any of the sorting or what, what you might need. And then um, I guess lastly in terms of buyers and buyer lists, I promise I'll be quiet after this, um, we do have a very active call center that is continually reaching out to buyers on your behalf um, to get them to the show. Of course, we need exhibitors and we need buyers in order to have successful shows, and we will always ask for your help in that. So if you have um, customer lists, that you would like to share with us. I promise you they remain proprietary. We do not share them. Um, we certainly can hand them over to our call center with, uh, you know, we're calling on behalf of XYZ Company to invite you to the 2016 House Tour Show. Please, you can either submit those lists to Perry or myself, and we will work with our call center to send that message out. Um, and I think Little? I've covered well, the housekeeping. <laughs> our house is clean here. Uh, uh, just one last final note. Thank you for being with us today. We really appreciate it. For those of you who have trouble sleeping or have other people on your team uh, who weren't able to make this uh, webinar, there will be a copy of this webinar recorded and put on our website, and we will send each of you the link to that so that you will have that directly after uh, as soon as it goes up on uh, on our website, which should be in the next 24 hours or so. So thank you again for your time. We appreciate it, and uh, good selling. Thank you.